Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm Leona Agaritas, President and CEO of the Golden Triangle Bid, and I'm here with my colleague, Jaron Price, who is President and CEO of the Downtown DC Bid. Together, our two bids encompass what most people think of as the downtown. Both bids have been serving the District of Columbia for 25 years now. We are collaborators, innovators, and doers. We've been working together across our boundaries since COVID and throughout the recovery. And we're so excited to be here with you today to talk about the next phase of the district's comeback. Jaron. Thank you so much, Leona. Uh, again, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jaron Price. Um, I serve as the president and CEO of the Downtown DC Business Improvement District. Uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today to what is our first official public meeting of the Downtown Action Plan. Uh, I am even more excited that we're launching uh, the public meeting for our Downtown Action Plan uh, right here in the beautiful uh, Conrad Hotel, which is in the heart of Downtown DC. I wanna thank the team here at the Conrad for all of your hospitality uh, and helping us to make this event so seamless. Thank you so much. Now, we have a lot that we wanna cover on today's agenda. Uh, today, you'll hear from some of our city leaders who are coming together in uh, an unprecedented collaborative fashion to work on the Downtown Action Plan. You will also hear from the lead project team who's gonna share a little bit more about what you can expect from this process. A critical part of that process is engagement of a diverse array of stakeholders. So um, a key piece of what we'll do today is also an interactive audience polling that will help us to begin to assemble some thoughts, some big ideas, and just some responses and feedback to what we should be thinking about to spur the reimagination and recovery of our downtown. And then finally, we'll close out uh, with a networking reception. Uh, and we'll have an opportunity for you to leave your feedback in some other different forms in the back of the room and outside of the room. Um, we'll also have an opportunity for, for you to engage with and learn from some of the different DC government agencies who have downtown recovery initiatives currently underway. So lots to cover, we're very excited about it and looking forward to jumping in. Now, before I go any further, I have to just take a quick moment uh, to say thank you uh, I want to thank every one of you who are in this room right now for choosing to be here. Uh, you could have been in many other places on this very beautiful Thursday, sunny afternoon with perfect weather, uh, but you've chosen to be here in this room with us, and that means and says a lot. Um, I will say I'm, I'm really blown away by the tremendous turnout. For those in the room, we are officially standing room only, so thank you uh, for all who are dedicated and passionate about being here in the room. Uh, we're also joined by countless others who are streaming uh, live via the mayor's live feed. So thank you for those who are joining us online. Um, I should also say, I'm not just amazed by the number and volume of people who are present in the room, um, but just by who's in the room. Um, I'm standing up here and just scanning and looking around and I see many familiar faces and some unfamiliar faces, but um, it's truly a pleasure to see so many people who care about downtown, who are passionate about our city, we have people who are talented, people who are passionate, people who are leading the city. We have business leaders, business owners, small businesses that are represented here in the room. We have some residents, uh, bumped into a few of our key stakeholders, people who work here in downtown. There's such a diverse mix of people in this space and that's exactly what we were setting out to achieve. So Leona, I don't know about you, but I'm incredibly excited just to see uh, who's in the room and who's joining us today. Now, one thing that I will say is incredibly important we're here for a purpose. So this is the public launch of the Downtown Action Plan. And obviously, we all care a lot about our downtown. Now, we are focused on downtown's comeback, and in some ways, that comeback is underway. We know that there are certain things that are doing well. Our restaurants are doing quite well. Our entertainment venues are largely doing well. Our convention center business is thriving. Um, and we've even had some really great happenings in recent weeks, businesses that have opened, uh, some of you were at the official roof raising event at the former WMATA headquarters earlier this week. Uh, that's gonna transform an, an underutilized building uh, in the city and downtown. So lots of good things are happening, but we know there's still work to be done. When we look at the data and what it's telling us, we know that there's less people in downtown, particularly during the daytime hours. In fact, our daytime population is still just 60% of what it was compared to pre-pandemic levels. Now, it doesn't take you know, expert economic analysis to say if you have less people, that means less 
money, less revenue, less tax dollars that are coming in, that's of concern. What is causing that? We know there's a myriad of issues, but one of the biggest is some of the pressure on the commercial office market. Right now, there's 25 million square feet of vacant office space within the city. Of that 25 million square feet of space, 17 million of that rest right here within the downtown DC bid and Golden Triangle bid area. So we have a real challenge underway. Now, I'll tell you what we're not going to do. We're not gonna sit by idly and wait and hope that things change on its own. We're not gonna sit and hope that somehow the market will magically correct itself. This is the time for us to take bold action and to take bold steps to invest in the future of our downtown and to cement its status as the economic engine for years to come. Now, in order for that to happen, this gathering right here is just the very first step. This is a once in a century opportunity to reimagine the world as we know it, to reshape and rethink what the role is that our downtown plays. And in order to do that, we need you. We need every one of you in this room. We need your voice. We need your thoughts, your perspectives, your big ideas, your resources. We need it all. And we need it to come together in a way that helps to propel us forward. Now, we're incredibly excited about today's event, and I'm excited to introduce our next speaker. Um, right here in the downtown and Golden Triangle area, we are represented by a dynamic council, council member uh, who represents Ward 2 and Council Member Brooke Pinto, and I want to introduce her to the stage now to offer some welcoming remarks. Please give a round of applause for Council Member Brooke Pinto. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is such a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much to Jaron and Leona for your continued leadership and galvanizing collaboration. I think today is just one of many, many examples of how you all have taken a very unfamiliar environment that we have all been through as a city and as a region and the world in the last several years um, and are using it to shape new experiences and new opportunities that give me so much hope for downtown. I am so privileged to have the honor of representing downtown DC and Ward 2 on the DC Council. And when I think about both the residents who live there, uh, the businesses who are ready there, the workers who are employed there, the people who come through there for entertainment, the people who look at downtown and say, hey, I want to be there. Um, we have a lot of opportunity here and we have a lot of need. Jaron talked about some of the vacant square feet of office space that we're struggling from. We still have many office workers not coming to work and as a result, people and employers not renewing their leases as much as we uh, would like to see. We have serious public safety challenges that are downtown that we're working to address to make sure that it is a safe place to live and work and play for every DC resident and visitor. Um, and we have a lot of these challenges that we have now recognized, but there is action that we have taken and that we are taking. Um, I introduced a bill in partnership with our bids um, called the Recovery Act, and it was all about recovery for the downtown Golden Triangle. And I'm very thrilled to share that as of this week, the three key pillars of the Recovery Act were passed and funded through the DC Council through our budget process. The first is around conversions of vacant office spaces. And we've had a great partnership uh, with Deputy Mayor uh, and uh, the Mayor's Office for making sure that these conversions are the appropriate mix. Again, this is not a solution that's gonna solve all of our challenges overnight, but it's one part of the strategy to make sure that we're taking those vacant office spaces and using tax incentives to say, hey, what else more productively can you do with that space? Whether that's housing, whether that is retail, hotels, uh, access to green space and recreation opportunities for our families. The downtown of 2019 is not gonna be the downtown of 2029, um, and that's okay. That's a, that's a great opportunity, but we need to lean into some of those incentives so we can see better benefits. The second pillar of my Bail the Recovery Act is around retail grants. Um, I wanna thank again, Deputy Mayor Anderson for his partnership there to make sure that we are being targeted when we are providing grants for brick and mortar businesses to relocate downtown with a prioritization for women and minority owned businesses, with a prioritization for grocery, urgent care, 
um, and child care centers, the things that we know are going to make the downtown more resilient and sustainable for not just people to live there, but for to have the services around that's going to make them effective. And the third piece is a new pilot program I created this year called the Safe Commercial Grants Program. And this program I'm very enthusiastic about is going to empower community groups like our bids, like our main streets, like others, to apply directly for grants to use for public safety purposes. So this can be for things like patrols, this could be for things like more lighting, more violence prevention efforts, and again, under the recognition that a one-size-fits-all mo one model for every neighborhood and community does not always work. We need to be empowering folks on the ground to use these funds as they see best for our community. Um, so I am very hopeful about the energy and talent that is in this room, um, and welcome Mayor Bowser. Uh, it's great to, to have your attention to the importance of downtown because again a successful and thriving DC really does rely on a successful and thriving downtown and I'm glad that uh, this argument has been made most effectively throughout the city especially this year um, but we have a great opportunity now to harness our collective resources talent brain power ideas um, into rebuilding a downtown that's truly vibrant resilient inclusive and safe and I'm glad just lastly that there needs to be a continued recognition of the interrelatedness between public safety and economic development. I'm the chair of the Judiciary and Public Safety Committee on the Council and that remains uh, central and front of mind especially as we think about downtown recovery and the type of downtown we all need. It's got to be safe. Um, we're going to keep fighting for that every single day. So thank you for having me. Thanks for your leadership. And thank you all for participating in this ongoing conversation. Thank you so much, Councilmember Pinto. Um, again, I think you're, you, you were so poignant in how you talked about the importance of having the attention uh, of our city leadership and of our government. Uh, and, and having the attention is part one, turning that attention into action is part two. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, uh, Deputy Mayor for Planning Economic Development, Keith Anderson, uh, who has really led some of the action behind the development and the implementation of the uh, DC Comeback Plan, which was the city's five-year economic development strategy. Uh, so without further ado, I introduce our Deputy Mayor for Planning Economic Development, Keith Anderson. Thank you, Jaron, and good afternoon, everyone. I just want to start with giving a big thanks to the teams at uh, the Downtown and Golden Triangle Bids for putting together this wonder wonderful event uh, that brings us together today. Uh, as you know, this is a tremendous opportunity for us to come together uh, and reimagine downtown. It will be a lot of work, and that's for sure, but a lot of work has already begun. And I want to share a bit with you, uh, a little bit with you, what the team at DEMPED is already advancing and making progress to a vibrant downtown. You have heard these three phrases a lot, and by now, by now, and most of you should be familiar with the three prongs of action. Fill the space, change the space, bring the people. Next slide. One of our main tools to help fill the space has been the Vitality Fund, which is designated to support companies in target industries that are actively planning to relocate, expand, or retain their physical location in Washington, D.C. To date, we have already announced two awardees, Vertru and Quadrant Strategies, who combined will bring 275 new jobs, lease over 33,000 square feet, and invest $6 million in their office spaces. These two projects are expected to generate $2.5 million in tax revenue for the district and will move us closer of our goal of creating 35,000 new high sector jobs uh, by 2028. Next slide, please. We also know that in order to truly transform downtown, 
we need to change this space. Downtown holds an incredible potential for us to create new housing by converting commercial properties into residential units. We are excited to see the council support and pass updates in our housing and downtown program as part of the FY24 budget process. This program will, la will launch this fall and will be a key driver uh, of new residential projects and get us 90% of, uh, of our way to the goal of adding 15,000 new residents to our downtown population. The mayor's approved FY24 budget also includes almost $10 million uh, to update Farragut Square Park. The Office of Planning is leading a downtown public realm uh, plan to, th to think through how to best utilize our downtown streetscapes, our sidewalks, public streets, alleys, and parks to support a more diverse and mixed-use set of neighborhoods. Director Cozart, to my left, is here today, and I know her team is excited to talk to you more about their excellent work. Uh, and, and today, Dent Demped released the RFP for Engine 3, located in downtown East. We are constantly looking for ways for the district to maximize and support economic development. We look forward to receiving proposals that would help us bring a vibrant, mixed-use, mixed uh, income community to a prime corridor of the city. Next slide. But we know that whatever we do, downtown has to be inviting, it has to be entertaining, and a welcoming space for our residents and our visitors from around the world. We recently released the Downtown Family Fund Destination Grant Program, which leverages leverages $7.5 million to promote the development of new family-friendly attractions uh, that would drive foot traffic, offer a new experience for the neighborhood, and create economic impact. And we're still accepting applications uh, through June 30th, so please help us get the word out. Uh, we are also proud of Office of Planning Successful Streets for the People grant program as well as DEMPED support for festivals that will continue in fiscal year uh, 24. Uh, now, I know uh, I mentioned a lot of different programs and initiatives, but we've consolidated information about these initiatives and our ongoing downtown analysis in one place. Uh, the QR codes you see in the posters in the room will bring you to a resource page that makes it easy to find our agencies, uh, DEMPED and beyond, uh, and what we are doing for downtown's revitalization. Team members from DEMPED and district agencies are here in the room right now, so please raise your hands, DEMPED team and district agencies, don't be shy. Uh, and so they'll be here uh, and available after, afterwards to talk to you about more of our initiatives and plan uh, to reimagine and re revitalize downtown. Again. We are so excited for, the, for, the, for this work and to get started with the action plan team and our government agency partners and all of you today. So thank you. Thank you again, Deputy Mayor Keith Anderson. We certainly appreciate your energy and enthusiasm and just the many actions that are underway already. Um, again, as we said uh, at the beginning, um, following this program, please make sure that you take a moment to engage with the folks around this room who can share some more about the initiatives that are underway um, and also be able to help capture some of your big ideas and your feedback. Um, it's my pleasure now to introduce someone who has been at the center of all of this action and frankly, um, from the onset of her historic third term, um, has made it very clear. We can round of applause for that. The historic third term mayor. She made it key, a central part of her goal to focus on the comeback of downtown DC. She actually said at the comeback plan press conference, everybody in DC government, a new thing I ask anyone who comes to meet with me in my office downtown is, what role will you play in DC's comeback? And we're here today to answer that call. The mayor has asked what role we will play. 
There are 300 people here in this room and many more watching online to help answer that. And I want you to hear from the person who has made that call directly. Please join me in welcoming to the stage our mayor, mayor of the greatest city in the world, Muriel Bowser. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. With an introduction like that, I'm feeling pretty powerful. But more than that, I am just delighted to be with all of you uh, in our beautiful downtown and talking about all the things that we have planned and that we will hear from you about what we need to do next to ensure uh, the city's revitalization. Uh, and I'm just really pleased to be here. Uh, I'm joined by a, a lot of people from my administration, uh, and we are ably led by the downtown bid and the Golden Triangle bid. So please give Jaron and Leona another round of applause. You just heard from the deputy mayor, uh, and I want to thank you, Keith, for your leadership. Sharon Carney also in Demped. Where's the other Demped team? All right, raise your hands, Demped team. They are working hard on a lot of issues all at once, uh, but the downtown and our five-year economic development strategy uh, is at the center of that work. I walked in at the start of or in the middle of Brooke Pinto's remarks, and I want to acknowledge the council member for Ward 2, who certainly has a big job in making sure that all the members of the council uh, can appreciate why we need a thriving downtown. Um, and I'm going to be right there with her. You better believe it. And I see Tommy Wells, our director for OPLA, for the mayor for the Office of Policy and Legislative Affairs, and former Ward 6 Council member, uh, as well as Latoya Foster, our director of uh, our Office of Cable, Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment, as well as Anita Cozart, who is the director of the Office on Planning. I call, and Christy Whitfield is here, I understand, from DSLBD, who's in the back, and I call on all of them um, because it is important, and I'm, I'm happy that there's a component of this discussion where you get to talk and meet with our officials um, about what's going on with your business or the idea that you have uh, that will bring us all together. Uh, we were last at the Conrad when we were talking about one of our premier events, and that's the Cherry Blossom Festival, uh, which is amazing. And I just heard that the numbers this spring for the Cherry Blossom Festival were off the charts. Uh, and if you were trying to get around the downtown during that time, you know what I mean. Uh, and I also know, uh, I heard a report that Metro had its best week since the pandemic last week. I, I saw a report that one of our restaurant gr groups had, oh, the Old Ebbet that's part of, Old Ebbet is part of that group, had its best five days since the pandemic last week. Uh, and so all of those indicators are a good thing. Uh, and it also speaks to um, the fact that we are the best city in the world, that our financials are strong, that our businesses are talented and hardworking, and that we have a hump that we will get over. Uh, and that is what this action plan is all about. Uh, we, of course, know that the, the solutions are in this room and in rooms like this where people are doing the work every day. Uh, and we feel like it's our job to ensure a policy environment where you can be successful. Uh, it is also our job to think really big. Um, there are some things that we will do that I characterize as blocking and tackling. Uh, and we do it better, we do it faster, and sometimes we do it with more money. Uh, and then there are things that we're going to do that we haven't done before, like the city actually being a promoter of events. We're a financial partner in big events. We haven't really done that, but we're doing um, that now. 
We also will double down on other efforts. Some of you are property owners and you need tenants. So what are we doing to ensure that the mayor has a toolbox to go out there and compete with other cities and other regions uh, to make sure that we are attracting employers? And we're doing it. Uh, I was just, I saw the general manager for Metro was here, but I was just with them as they are um, working with a development team on their building that will be demolished and rebuilt and a new tenant has already been se secured a big law firm so that's fantastic i was just at the capitol jewish museum uh, where we have created another destination where visitors from around the world will come to washington and learn about local jewish washington at a wonderfully imagined uh, museum and uh, at a synagogue that has been moved two times. Uh, so it's wonderful, a new destination for us. We were in Georgetown uh, where we can see the, the boat in the canal that we are partnering with the federal government to help restore to create additional destinations uh, for people all over. We're also asking people, what are you doing uh, to bring the people downtown? And you may not think of our central library as a host or a venue for a go-go concert, but that's what they did. And thousands of people came uh, to the downtown. Uh, we continue to be partners um, with the development community and other utilized spaces. Some, uh, we have very little local property in the downtown, but we have some, uh, including near Union Station, uh, and we're constantly looking for other opportunities to add amenities to the downtown. Uh, we, uh, for example, created a space in a few spaces uh, in partnership with the downtown bid, like Franklin Park, and uh, we created Black Lives Matter Plaza, a new destination, uh, and we are gonna look to other federal parks to help uh, them maximize one said uh, park that we included in this year's budget. So these are some of the things um, that we know are already uh, go moving and going along the way. We also know that we want our workers back. And a part of having our workers back are high level discussions that we continue to have uh, with the federal government. And we continue and will continue to keep you posted on that. Changing the mix of space in the downtown, um, that it was probably discussed already, is also a primary goal of ours. Our downtown housing um, program has advanced through the, the council um, pretty much intact, and we know that is going to help us change the mix um, that is necessary in the downtown and go from a 90% uh, commercial uh, area to, more, to one that has more residents uh, and more visitors and more attractions in the downtown. So I continue uh, to be optimistic about where we're going and uh, recognize that this is an important part of the process, hearing from you, engaging with you, and turning your ideas into budget proposals, or turning your ideas into legislative proposals, or even turning your ideas into emergency action when they're necessary. That's how important um, this phase of our comeback is. So ideas, investments, action, and I can't um, overemphasize how important our leaders are in these discussions. I'm one person who evangelizes about the district, but so are you. I meet with businesses about the district, so do you. Some of you have Congress people that can vote that need to be working on making sure downtowns have what they need. Are you with me? Uh, and I know all of you uh, are also working with members of the council, led by Council Member Pinto, uh, to have the discussion. We shouldn't be in our city having a discussion about the downtown versus everybody else, or business versus community, because we really are all in this together. And this budget season that we've just gone through is just a demonstration of that. If values in the downtown go down, Revenues for the district go down. The nice, shiny things that we want go away. 
and that's not the city that I will preside over. We're gonna work together to make sure that we are a growing city and that we can make and prioritize um, the investments that we need to have safe neighborhoods, great schools, to continue to be the number one park system in the nation, uh, grow our revenues because people are owning and starting their businesses here, and that uh, we are attracting uh, businesses to, to start uh, in Washington, D.C. I, I see the former mayor, his head just poked up. I want to acknowledge him, Mayor Anthony Williams. And I'll end by saying this. <laughs> mayor Williams had this wild promise years ago. And everybody thought he was crazy that we would add, then we were probably around 500,000 people, maybe less, that we would add 100,000 people to Washington, D.C. And you know what happened? We added over 200,000 people to Washington, D.C. because of a singular goal uh, and a focus on the whole government moving it. And our economic development strategy, we have more goals than one, uh, but they include adding more people to the downtown, creating more black homeowners in Washington, D.C., making sure we have more businesses, local businesses in Washington, D.C., and improving the household income of black Washingtonians. All of those things make for a more vibrant, more inclusive, growing and competitive Washington, D.C. So get to work, everybody. We need your help. Oh my God, was that not amazing? You, it was so wonderful to hear you and all the optimism, Mayor Bowser. Can we please have another round of applause for her? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Great, great, great. And, and thank you, Mayor Bowser, Councilmember Pinto, and Deputy Mayor Anderson for all of the support and leadership that you have shown the downtown. Um, I, I was inspired by the mayor's remarks, and I think the best is yet to come, and I can't wait to be part of it. Um, we are a local city, quite clearly. We are a national capital, and we are a world leader. And people here and around the world look at us for inspiration and for leadership. And that's what we're going to start doing even more strongly today. So I have a challenge for you. Today, we are going to think really big. We're going to think not only about offices and departments, which is a key goal, but also about all of the other things, parks and green space, schools and grocery stores, culture and entertainment, university and education, innovation and technology, and so much more. Your thoughts today are going to kick off a robust process of broad public engagement. Our economic development consultant, R.C. Elko, will evaluate your input and the other input that we get along the way. They're going to analyze the feasibility of different interventions, and they're going to recommend how to implement this change. Consider this a strategic plan with tactical next steps. The results are going to be aspirational, yet strategic and tactical. And the results will guide the future of the downtown for decades to come. We are all part of something very big. Now I would like to introduce former planning director, Andrew Trueblood. Our two bids selected Andrew and his consultant team to lead this effort on behalf of all of us. Andrew. Thank you, Leona and Jaron. Uh, thank you. Councilmember Pinto, Deputy Mayor Anderson, and Mayor Bowser. Um, and uh, thank you all. Uh, this is uh, so exciting. Um, I, I think when we were planning this, uh, this whole effort, uh, we, we had kind of a set of, of, of events that we were going to do. And, and it started with the mayor's announcement a few weeks ago. And we were taken aback by how much excitement there was at that, at that event. And we realized we needed a bigger room. 
uh, for the kickoff. Uh, and I'm glad we got that bigger room, and I'm glad we had this opportunity to be together. I'm really here uh, right now to talk about what the action is in the action plan. Um, this is you know, a plan, which I love, as many of you know, as former planner, but it is an action, a set of actions that we all can take. And so I'm going to put a little bit of meat on that bones uh, with the caveat that uh, this is a deck with a lot of words. You, it'll be online uh, at reimaginedowntowndc.com if you want to see it or if you want to provide feedback. So don't worry about all the words, maybe, uh, but, but uh, uh, you know, it, it gets the point across, and, and I'll sort of speak over it. This basically says DC is the best city in the world. That's what this, side, this says. And it says uh, that we're a leader already uh, in reimagining, in, in thinking about the future of the downtown. You know, part of our work here is seeing what other cities are doing. And you know, other cities, they have plans and, 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 and they have policies. But we had, DC and the mayor had plans and policies months, years ago. And this, this is the first city to really bring a, a large group of people together to do this, to think and reimagine the future. And I want to emphasize something that many of the speakers said, which is this is a once in a generation opportunity. This is a the big ideas. This is the chance to really think about the downtown of the future. What we have now, we inherited from some might say the 50s, some might say the 70s, maybe the 90s. But the, the downtown that we're working on now the, with the future of work and residential and mixed use, that's the downtown for the next generation or two. Um, for our children and our grandchildren. So I think that is what we're excited to do, and that's why we need everybody here uh, to think through and what the transformation will be. But also, another key word here is investment, because we can be aspirational, and that's great, but it doesn't happen without real investment. And, and the city is obviously here as part of that, but the city can't, can't do it all. Uh, we need private sector investment. We need civic investment. We need investment from everybody around in this room and outside of this room uh, to really see it. So I think what's exciting about this um, is, is the opportunity. And, and, and you've already felt the energy, and we're going to be continuing that over the next few months. Um, so the goal here, and you heard it a little bit uh, from the council member and the mayor, to, to create a set of recommendations uh, for the council, the council and the mayor to consider in budget and in actions and policy and legislation. But it's also a set of recommendations for you, for us, to do. Uh, for everybody, and, and it's about alignment. Um, and, and so thinking about uh, questions around what is the right mix of uses? Uh, what, how do we bring our workers back? How do we think about the, the workplace of the future? Who are the residents of the future? How do we bring visitors from all over? The DC is one of the best places in the world to visit, um, and it's a huge asset. The, the, the district, the downtown DC is the center of, of the region, of a, of a six million person region of a global capital, uh, and, and that is an asset that will always be here and that we're trying to take advantage of. Um, so the purpose of this is alignment, um, and that's what we're ho hoping this, this document will be. Uh, if the next slide talks a little bit about what is downtown. Uh, you know, as a planner, I love maps, so this is uh, Anita. Uh, hopefully this passes the, uh, or Director Cozart, hopefully this passes the bill. Um, but we, you know, what is downtown is actually a really interesting and critical question. Uh, the mayor's comeback plan had a whole section about it, and we adopt that uh, broader geography of what downtown is. It goes all the way from basically Union Station up Mass Ave. To, um, to DuPont Circle and even north of DuPont Circle, then kind of down sort of along, uh, along the park, uh, ca capturing the West End and Foggy Bottom, and then crossing all the way through Federal Triangle back around. Um, and, and I think what's important to note is that is our broader, that is an area that we, that's kind of our, our, our main focus, but we have these two incredible bids who are, who are critical um, actors within these, and so understanding where the bids are, which is these two colored areas uh, for red or pink, I guess, for uh, the downtown bid and, and orange for the Golden Triangle, um, and, and understanding how, how they play in this area, and also recognizing that some of the actions might be uh, you know, on the, on the periphery and even outside of this particular area. We have to draw a line somewhere, but they don't have to be hard boundaries. Um, so this is, this is what we're using. If, if you're interested, we have uh, sticky notes in the back with these maps. If you have specific areas and ideas on, on, on big ideas for, for small locations, um, you, can, you can give that to us. You can also, we have this map online, and you can click on it and provide feedback about a specific area as well. So it takes a village to raise an action plan, uh, I think is what they say. Uh, so uh, we have, as you've heard and as you see here, a lot of people, um, critically important, uh, Golden Triangle uh, downtown bid, 
uh, both bids, as well as the Federal City Council, um, are really sort of leading and helming this effort. Um, it's, but it's, it's, it's also critical to have the public sector, who have been incredibly important partners and will be important partners. It is very much a public-private effort, and I think that is what is its strength. I would add to that civic, uh, and maybe you know, that is what we are all here. It's a civic effort, too, as we all think about it. Um, but then, you know, somebody has to like, you know, put on the calendar invites and like host the Zooms, and that's my job. Um, and I, there's a team there. Uh, we, we've we've put together uh, a great team. Uh, Kyanite Partners, uh, actually out of New York, uh, J Justice and Sustainability Associates, who you'll be hearing from um, in a minute, as well as um, a national firm called IDEO, that's a national design firm, and they'll be helping, uh, especially with some of the work around Federal City Council. Um, and then finally, you heard there's an economic development consultant team. They're there to run numbers, to really think about especially that investment and that financing piece, um, RCL Co. and HDR, and you'll be hearing from them in just a second. Okay, so I think you've heard. This is, we're not starting from scratch. There is already a lot of momentum um, that has happened, especially uh, since COVID, but it builds on things that happened from before COVID. Uh, it builds on things as far back as 1982 uh, and the downtown, the, you know, the, the living downtown plan for those who know, but there, there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's important to know how we got here. Um, and we have all of these resources available on the website. Um, the DC's comeback plan, uh, the comprehensive plan for those who really want uh, a lot to read. Um, but, but I think there's, it's, it's important to note there's a lot of uh, specific documents, both at Golden Triangle and the downtown bid. Um, the, the recently, uh, the, downtown, uh, bid, the downtown DC did their parks master plan, um, as well as uh, there's a, a, a great a, a number of good uh, pieces of, of, of I'm sorry, a number of good reports from the Golden Triangle bid, including for their uh, Penn West Equity and Innovation District. So there's a lot of momentum. And then I see we have our federal partners here. Uh, I see NCPC and Marcel Acosta. Uh, you know, your, Pencil, your Penn Avenue initiative is, is, a, is another critical piece of this, and also how you can help us work with uh, federal employers and, par and think about the parks and the National Park Service. So um, this is all available at, re at the website at reimaginedowntowndc.com, uh, which also is uh, on the QR code. Um, you heard uh, from the deputy mayor that there's a comeback plan that has lots of actions. Downtown is one of eight, uh, really focusing. One of the, the kind of critical pieces is transforming downtown into a lively and vibrant urban center, featuring mixed-use neighborhoods and entertainment, cultural and retail nodes. So that is critical, and that is what we that is sort of a, a north star for us. Um, and and uh, you heard a little bit about it, but I just want to go to the next slide because many of you have heard uh, the critically, critically important goal of 15,000 new residents in downtown DC. Um, and that is a, a, an important pillar, but that's not the only one. Um, as the mayor said, there's actually a number of actions. You don't need to read these, but there are 10 of them. Um, but really about around the change the space, fill the space, bring the people. Um, and then implementation, which is what we're doing here. Um, so. The, the idea is there's lots, of, there's lots of uses, there's lots of actions. There's not one silver bullet that's going to solve everything. We're going to need to do various, take various actions in various places to get there. And the, uh, I think what we've realized as we've started working together is the future and the excitement and the vibrancy of downtown is about people, people who want to be downtown, whether they want to live downtown, whether they will be working downtown, whether they will be visiting downtown or studying downtown, they will, this is a place where they will want to choose to be. They will want to choose to get here or live here or take the metro here. Um, and, and so thinking about that really uh, helps us uh, think about what are the big actions that can be taken um, and the small actions that can be taken to get there. And so this is thinking about um, these, these critical different constituencies is, is one of our organizing principles. And I think one of the things, one of the ways that we'll be working with the economic development consultant to understand downtown and the, the potential actions. Next slide. So you, you sort of overlay that with these, these drivers and themes that you've heard. Right? Obviously, economic sector and land uses, this includes things like residential, hospitality, what are we doing with our land? Um, these are all, or office, office conversions. These are all things that, that we think about in terms of how to make this happen. But it's important that there are key enablers that we also have to think about as well. And these are transportation and hard infrastructure. How are people getting around downtown? How are they getting to downtown? Um, how, do we have, how are we thinking about energy uh, usage downtown? 
civic infrastructure and amenities. Our parks are some of the best in the world, but are they being fully utilized and are they as strong of an asset as they can be to bring and bring and keep people downtown? Uh, and, and that is something, you know, uh, the, the Martin Luther King Library is a gem. It's a gem and it's, and it's doing a lot of good work. Uh, and how can, we how can we build on that? How can Franklin Park be a place that is a world renowned park and, and neighborhood in, in the city? And so that, that's civic infrastructure and amenities, social infrastructure, recognizing the port importance of public safety, human services, uh, recognizing that we need to think about our unhoused residents. Uh, that's, that is also a critical part of this. And then finally, uh, Tommy Wells is here, so environment and sustainability, I put that bullet for you. Um, uh, so, you know, thinking about how we can be a global leader in the future of climate change. I think the downtown DC is already uh, one of the most sustainable ways to bring people together, uh, but how can we continue to be at the vanguard of that? Finally, okay, so this is my planning piece here. I just want to say uh, that uh, downtown is not a singular place. We talk about downtown, and we, we face this a little bit, uh, thinking about the borders of downtown. But it's even when you draw it, it's so many different interesting places. 7th Street is so different from 19th Street. Um, and Federal Triangle is so very different from Foggy Bottom or from um, Gallery Place. So um, this, this is actually a map from the Mayor's Comeback Plan. Um, and you see that it recognizes there are these different kind of nodes and areas, and that's what we're really excited to do is think about how are these different neighborhoods of downtown existing and working, and what might be an intervention in one area uh, might, might, might be very successful in one area, maybe different in another, and how do these each have their own sense of place? Uh, and so that's something that we're really excited to hear from you. Uh, we'll be engaging with experts uh, and, and doing analysis on. Um, but I think that's, that will be a really important component of this plan. Um, so this is just, uh, so actually before, uh, the action plan as the, as the mayor and everyone said is engagement is critical. Uh, I don't know if you all saw, there, there are these building blocks. I hope people got them. They're in red. Uh, they're red blocks for downtown bid. They're yellow blocks for Golden Triangle. And there's another color for federal, blue for federal city council. So you can see what you got. If you want to trade to get a bunch of different colors, you should after that. <laughs> but, but, but here's what I'm saying is, is you, if you took one of these, uh, that, that this isn't free. Uh, where what we want is we want to hear from you now. Uh, and how are you going to help us build uh, downtown? Or how are you going to help, how are you going to be a part of building downtown? Uh, and so, so please take them and please consider the responsibility to keep engaging with us. There are many ways, including starting today uh, in, in just a minute. Um, but we have, um, feed, the website will be open 24 seven for your feedback. Uh, you can click on a map, you can provide, there's forms. You can also just click contact us if you don't like all that. Um, we'll be having public webinars, including one on the 21st, you'll see in a second. Um, there will be surveys that our, our economic uh, consultant is doing. Uh, we have a steering committee with some workshops, and we have focus groups. So there's lots of opportunities for you. Hopefully you see yourself, or you, you, you have the opportunity to give us feedback uh, through this or others. Um, but th that is what this is, and we're going to kick that off in just a second. Um, so here's, here's a little bit of a timeline, putting a little bit of of meat to the bones. We've had, we had the announcement in May. Today's the big kickoff. Um, we have a webinar series starting June 21st. Um, uh, Mayor Williams will be interviewing uh, Edward Gla Ed Glazer, uh, who's a Harvard professor thinking about these issues. Um, and think about how do we frame this? This is the very kickoff of like, what are the questions we should be asking? Um, and there will be a series to follow that. Uh, we have steering committee meetings and futuring workshops. Our economic development will be doing consulting, could doing surveys over the summer um, and focus groups, all with the idea, the critical point, and I guess I missed this in the previous slide, we have to deliver something to the mayor by, by November, right? Uh, uh, for those who know, uh, the, budgets, the budget season starts then. So if we want to, to really have that impact, uh, that, is the, that is the goal we're shooting for. Um, and so with that, I just want to share a little, I want to um, actually pass it uh, to Erin Talkington, who's from uh, RC Elko, manage, she's a managing director at RC Elko, talk a little bit about how they're going to be analyzing uh, the, the data downtown. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks to all of our, our partners at the bid and the city and the mayor and everyone else who's in this room today. We, I think we heard it's 300 people-ish in a city of 700,000, and so there's a lot more energy and excitement, I think, that we're hoping you all can help bring to the project as, as we embark on our work. Uh, just to speak a little bit about where we're headed, uh, RCLCO's role is to put the action in Andrew's plan, 
and make sure that we're really thinking hard about what's out there and what could be the opportunities, and not just what we've seen as the roadblocks or, or, or what we might have seen in the past. So this is really meant to be a forward-looking analysis and a forward-looking set of research. And so just to give you a, a sense of what's in this very small text, uh, the first step is underlying research and analysis, really understanding where we've been and where we're going, uh, what some of uh, the potential impediments have been to implementing these past plans in downtown. There's a lot of good ideas, probably some new ones, but, but we've had a lot of good ideas in the past. And, and so we want to understand how that's played out and what we could do differently to make those more real in the future. Uh, we're going to look at economic and demographic real estate trends um, and understanding of, of what's in our downtown and what's in other downtowns. Uh, you saw that really cool map with some cool nodes and corridors and looking at how we might divide up downtown into some different places. Think about this as, as, a, as a downtown of neighborhoods, not just, not just one monolithic place where we aren't really sure which street we're on at sometimes. And understanding the social side of it too. What, what does it mean to have great parks and public space? And what's the economic impact of that? Uh, as well as how do we integrate public safety and public services into our thinking and our framework. And so all of that's meant to roll up and, and take your survey feedback and, and your verbal feedback into account as we forecast, you know, what does it mean if we don't do anything? Or, or what does it mean if we only do a little bit, if we don't make big moves? Uh, and that's not our hope, but our hope is that when that really gives us the ability to measure the impact of our actions going forward. And so as we think about what matters to you all and what matters to the city at large, our, our goal is to really understand what, what's gonna move the needle, the short term and the long term, so that the interventions and the actions that we recommend uh, can be things that we hand to the mayor and hand to the city staff and say, let's go, <laughs> let's do it. So I think our next step is to ask you all for some survey feedback. Yeah. Can we take it back? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. I'm, I'm now excited uh, to, to welcome another partner of ours, uh, Justice and Sustainability Associates. Um, Don Edwards is here to facilitate a little bit of, of feedback from you all and, and hear from you uh, live about what your thoughts and, and ideas are. So, uh, Don, please. Stop. Hello, everyone. All right, so this is like church. Everybody gets a chance to make a contribution. <laughs> but it is not an opportunity for you to take out your phones and do your email. We want you to take out your phones, but we're going to do some polling. And this is sort of like a down payment, but also an example and an exercise of what it means that we have a commitment to engage all of you, all of the people you represent, all your friends and your family, and helping to reimagine DC's downtown. So we are interested, first of all, in knowing what you think. Um, so we're going to ask you 10 questions. They're going to be a range of questions. You're going to have some options, some multiple choice, um, some ranking. So we want you to be ready. I'm going to kind of walk you through each one. They're going to pair up here. Um, and, and one of the things that we also want to do is begin to get some sense of where we need to focus our attention. Andrew pointed out a kind of a process diagram. You saw a steering committee, you saw focus groups, you saw a workshop, different things, but we wanna make sure that they are tailored to the kinds of issues that we'll be able to learn more about from you. So from the standpoint of um, participating in this polling, I want you to go to this address, P-O-L-L-E-V dot C-O-M slash J-P-O-L-L 746. Now, hopefully that's not going to overwhelm our bandwidth here, but that's where we want you to go so you can participate in this poll. We're going to ask you some questions and give you the answers in real time. So we've put aside some time for this because we want to get it. So let me get a sense of who's online, who's ready. I'd like to see more hands. Okay, readiness. All right, we're going to proceed. So one thing you should know is there are going to be staff in the room who have mics because at some point 
based on the answers we get, I'm going to probe some of those answers. We may get some surprise answers. We may want you to elaborate. So some of you came with some comments and some guidance. Be ready to kind of stand up when I ask and have a person with a mic come to you. All right, so if you're here, you've got, all right, so you've already begun. All right, good. That was, uh, that was easy. So we wanted to make sure that you got a chance to describe yourself. Um, how are you connected to DC's downtown? So you're already doing that. And we appreciate that. And we've got some monitors all over the room, so we want you to keep up and follow with this. Making sure that we have a representative demographic in the room is very helpful. So you can begin to see that we've got um, other, I'm going to probe on other a little bit. Um, and then we've got a big bunch of you who are tenants and workers in downtown. Who are some of the others? Just, just shout it out for me. Government. Who's Government. Government. Someone else. Great. And we're capturing this, so anything you say, we're going to write it down. Temporary event space users. Who else? Someone, a couple more. Yes. None. Okay. Someone else. All right. Say it again. Advocates. All right. Great. We are going to want to make sure that you get your fingerprints put on this new downtown. So that's important. Your diversity is important to us. Um, I think we can move on now, Sam. Let's go to the next question. Huh. All right. So what we wanted to do was ask you um, to give us a word, a description, that would give us a sense through this wordle of what's, what's the thing that your vision speaks to. Um, and we thank you for this. Um, you're continuing to add. But you can see in the world, oh, what's, what's standing out? Vibrancy looks to be very important to a lot of you. Um, it's very helpful to get a word like this because at the end of the day, we hope that the three big ideas that were introduced earlier are going to give you a pathway to these kinds of outcomes. Vibrancy has stayed there. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, mixed, I see standing out. Diverse is standing out, accessible, uh, welcoming. So these are words that mean things to you, and so we're very thankful for them. Um, I think we can go to the next question, and this one you have two options. Um, and if you will, uh, I'm going to ask you to let me cue you to the next question. Um, so that so that I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to answer. You guys are getting out, of, gotten out real fast here. So what would you like to see more of in DC's downtown? Pick two. How do you get to the next question? I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, let me just say, I'm sure you're not a moron. That's a good question. Can someone help this lady? Sure, just show her. You got it. Okay. All right. We got two. 23% locally owned businesses and boutique shops. Followed up by green infrastructure and sustainable projects. I'm a little interested in the green infrastructure and sustainable projects. Who has a comment about that? What are you talking about? Yes. Great transit. Great transit. All right, Laura. Okay. Yes. Say that again. Pedestrianized plazas. Pedestrianized plazas. Someone over here? Someone in the back? Yes. Chargers instead of meters. Okay. One more. Let's take one more. Huh? Rooftop gardens. DC has a lot of rooftop gardens, a lot of green roofs. We want more. Okay, next question. Um, so, what do you see as the primary role for the reimagined downtown? Hmm? 
Mm, okay. Interesting. Central Employment Hub. Hub for Cultural Activities. A livable neighborhood. So this is very interesting. I, I want to hear from anyone who wants to say what, what their two are, their two most important are. Since we've got a little bit of a race here, they're all in the 20s, though it looks like Cultural Activities Hub and Livable Neighborhood. What, what would make it possible for us to, to deliver on this if we were to combine any of these three? Anyone want to talk about that? Like, what would be a livable neighborhood for you? Yes. That's great. Thank you. Yes. Two places for people to hang out other than just work. Um, well, you know, I always, I always thought, uh, dreamed when I uh, retired that I was going to sit in a cafe and have a glass of wine and watch the world go by. And I think that neighborhoods need to provide a a space where you are free, you are uh, welcomed, um, and that you can uh, participate in your community by being in that space. Okay, one more. Let's take one more. Yes. Yes. Hi, my name is Rochelle Nigro. I'm commissioner for ANC 2G06. I want to reflect that what will not be livable, the DC government wants to put in the Department of Corrections central cell block across from the downtown bid in a residential area. It has been kept a secret from us for two years and they chose not to tell anyone. Okay. So I will tell you what is not livable is putting that jail in a residential neighborhood. So we are Got here it. to protest that and All we right. will not accept that from the DC government. Thank it you. is shameful that they did not tell anyone for two years. They Thank kept it a secret. Point. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, okay, imagine a big project or idea you've seen in another city. Okay. An aquarium. Yeah, that's big. Holiday lights, New Year's Eve ball drop. That's big. Okay. A green belt type neighborhood. What is that? What is a green? I've never imagined green belt as being a neighborhood, but <laughs> what's, what's that one? Anyone want to elaborate? Nope. The belt line. Okay. Got it. Pocket parks. Exhibitions. Anyone want to talk about that? Exhibitions? Are you talking about exhibition space? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, okay, all right, okay. Copenhagen, Copenhagen Meat Packing District, Pennsylvania Avenue, urban farming. Urban farming, now that's, that requires a lot of available land maybe, is that right or wrong? Maybe? That's interesting, Mayor. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. St. Pancreas type development. Okay. All right. This is very good stuff. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go to the next one. Um, this one kind of gets to the Mayor's comeback plan. And here we want you to do some ranking. And you've done that. So the first thing, huh? Create residential nodes and increase housing supply downtown. That's not surprising. Um, the second one 
is establish downtown destination corridors. All right, got a tie for third. Vitality Fund to accelerate business attraction and retention and bolster tourism, hospitality, and entertainment. Okay, housing supply, huge. Um, and the mayor has already made big commitments to that. Um, destination corridors. What would be an example of a destination corridor someone has in mind? Say that again. City center. Okay. Someone else? Can't hear you. Art block. An art rock would be an example of a destination corridor. Okay. <laughs> what get, do you have an example from somewhere else? Say it again. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Um, but it's clear uh, that these top three are, are kind of important and fundamental. All right. Uh, next one. Um, this goal of increasing residents in downtown. We want you to select, <laughs> how do you feel? Yeah. So who wants to talk about the challenge of this, of this? Who wants to speak to that? I see that a lot of you think that it's the right target this 15,000, but I'm just curious. Anyone, there's a lot that thinks it's too small, so you must think there, there's some more that needs to be done. Anyone want to talk about that? Yes, sir? There we go. Uh, one thing to consider is with development and well, with new development, you often see residential buildings go up, retail stay vacant. Almost every apartment building that gets built, there's no activity on the ground floor. It's not in the development plan. So if you reimagine and thought about activity first, whether it's cultural arts, some type of entertainment, some type of engagement that will attract people. Like I live in Southwest, I'm from uptown, right? I moved to Southwest because of the activity, okay. the then wharf and the now wharf. So if you reimagine what that could look like, you will bring people in. The destination, the attractor, the magnet. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to talk about this? Mm hmm okay. Um, three top ways you can bring more people downtown. This gentleman talked about some of them. Um, we want your options, and what are the three most important options? Build more residential housing, okay. That's gonna bring people downtown. I think beyond having people live downtown, let's talk about the mayor mentioned residents and visitors especially regional visitors. Anyone want to talk about regional visitors? George, I've already talked to you. Someone else. Yes. I'll hold it. Say it again. For everybody, that's why. Safe transportation infrastructure, especially for pedestrians. Okay, all right. Hi, I'm, hi my name is Josie Harris, Black Bella DC, and I'm kind of parallel to what Ian just pointed out. Small businesses fuel everything that we have discussed. It, brings in our international uh, visitors, our local tourists and visitors. It also is the reason that people make the strategic decisions to move to the communities where they want to live. And um, I, I, we need help. As a Washingtonian fifth generation, we are people to live, stay, spend money in the city. So it really starts and ends with the small businesses. You want more support for small business growth, retention. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, just a couple more. 
Um, all right, so this, this one is, what are the three top areas? You saw a map that Andrew presented. What are your three top areas for focus, development, attention? Converting, transforming underutilized office spaces into other uses. Uh, building more residential units. Mary, you got a lot of support for that. Creating streets that are more engaging for pedestrians. Okay. All right. And then we've got one last one. Um, What's your out of the box, big picture? Big picture ideas don't have to be big, but they can be unique and challenging and provocative and interesting. What are your big ideas? Mega block that is pedestrian only with retail, pedestrian only zones. European cities do a lot of that. Make downtown easy to get to. Exhibitions, festivals. Raise the height limit. Okay, that's, how, that's challenging. Yeah. <laughs> Connecting streets to rooftop entertainment, movies on the mall. Some of that's done. Entertainment, more human scale and hospitable public spaces. Water element, river walk in DC. That's, that's underway, Mayor Williams started that. Okay, huge community space in downtown. Return to work. Huh. More child care centers. Who wants to talk about that? What would that look like? More child care centers. Yes. Can we get a mic for this lady? Sorry, Angelica from the Office of the Year for economic development. If we're talking about child care centers, I definitely think it has to be more affordable child care centers. Child care centers are centers in downtown DC range from $2,800 a month to $3,000 a month. Um, I work in downtown DC and I, um, I prefer to send, well, I send my child to um, child care in Ward 5 um, because um, it's $1,800 a month. I hear you. Okay. Thank you, young mom. Okay. I want to add, um, my name is Doreen Barnes. I am a consultant for my own small business. Um, one of the things that I want to add is that um, we need to do better with mentoring. And I think we isolate it by putting it in communities when we need to engage our youth in the business areas so that they understand what business looks like. Because if you go to school in a certain demographic, you miss out on what the federal government offers, or you may not even know because those schools are dealing with maybe problem issues opposed to dealing with trying to um, engage our young people so that they know how to incorporate themselves into business. So one of the things that I added was my big idea is to get a hub in the federal centers downtown so that we can have youth and young adults come out teach them how to write resumes, teach them how to dress for success. We have eliminated those processes, and my big idea is to try to bring it back. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we've pretty much done what we wanted to do as a way to get started. You've given us a lot of guidance and input. Um, <laughs> please keep it coming, um, and, and, and don't hesitate to go big and go innovative. There's going to be more opportunity for you at the back of the room, there are tables and folks outside in the big hall, to give feedback and input. And we don't want you to see this as a one and done. Um, we're going to want this to be very iterative and continue to get your engagement. So please um, continue to look for opportunities to do that. I want to thank you. And now I'm going to bring, I think, Jaron and Leona, Garen and Gio, Leona back up. And they're going to talk about next steps, yeah? I 
I don't know about you all, but there are a lot of really inspiring big ideas. What do you all think? Are your wheels turning a little bit? Good. We want to keep that energy flowing um, just in terms of our next steps from now and for the next few minutes, uh, next 30 minutes or so. Please do stay here and mingle with the folks in the back. We have a number of our D.C. government agencies with information about key initiatives happening right now with respect to downtown. There's also some spaces if you want other ways to give your feedback. Andrew mentioned the geographic specific feedback that you may want to provide. We have large maps in the back where you can place um, your ideas in a specific corridor. So please do see our friends there as well as a space to drop your other big ideas. As Andrew mentioned, our website is open 24 seven, uh, reimaginedowntowndc.com. We'd love to get your feedback there as well. Um, as was mentioned before, on June 21st, we have our Reimagining DC's Downtown uh, webinar with Ed Glazier. Uh, please feel free to sign up for that. We'd love to have your feedback and input on that webinar. Um, and then in an ongoing way, please continue to offer your feedback. We want to continue to engage with you. This was a great first step. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your thanking, your energy. Uh, this was incredibly helpful. Um, and I think after this, we have a little reception for you. Yeah. So please stick yeah. around, talk to folks in the room. We want to continue to hear from you. Thank you again yeah. to Mayor Bowser and everyone who's been involved in making this such a success. We appreciate you. Yeah.